Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. Lord, I lift. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad. I'm so glad you're in I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from you, you came, came from, from heaven, heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My debt to pay from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad. I'm, I'm so, so glad, glad you're in my, my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. Lord, I lift. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from, you came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My death to pay from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift, Lord. Sing your praises. I'm so glad. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. Lord, I lift. Lord, I lift your name on high. Yeah. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. him tonight and thank him for his loving kindness hallelujah he's mighty good somebody say he's good come on he's good he's real good hallelujah real real good hallelujah thank you lord jesus come on and praise him
praise elder pointer hallelujah come on and bless the name of our god he's worthy of our praise tonight amen come on let's give god some praise on this good friday evening amen, amen. We are live in person and streaming. If you are not streaming, can you just let us know you're here? Just give us a hand clap emoji or type your name. Let us know you're worshiping with us on tonight, whether on Facebook, YouTube, however you're doing it. We want to know that you are here with us. Amen. It is Good Friday. Now, based on what happened to our Savior, it won't sound good. Based on what happened to our Savior, I'm sure it didn't feel good. But it is indeed good. Because we know, Brother Paul wrote it, all things work together for the good of those that love him and are called according to his purpose. Isaiah there's a scripture in Isaiah. Go to the scripture Isaiah uh, 53. says, Surely. Surely. He has borne our griefs. Carried. I'm sorry. Give me just a moment. I want to continue to give God some praise for a second. Right. 
Isaiah 53, 4. Surely he has borne our griefs, carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes, some verses say his wounds, his pain, we are healed. Tonight you're going to hear a little bit about those stripes. You're going to hear something about those griefs and those sorrows. You're going to hear something about that affliction. But in spite of what we share tonight, you will still hear that it is still good Friday. Amen. Let's pray. God, we thank you. We thank you for your sacrifice. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you that as we go through this evening, we keep ourselves reminded that it is a good Friday, that it is a good thing, that it was all part of the plan. So we thank you now for those that are here in the sanctuary, prepared to hear your word. Those that are in the East Sanctuary, prepared to hear your word. We pray that each of our preachers would uh, have a fresh anointing. Speak to us, God, as we speak to your people. Yes, 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 yes. Touch us, God, as we uh, let your people know what your word says. We thank you. We honor you. God, we give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray for his sake. Amen. And amen. Amen. Are we ready for our first word tonight? Are we ready for our first word tonight? Our first word is coming from uh, one of our leaders, the hardest working woman in ministry. Can we give God some praise for co-pastor Kathy E. Pointer as she brings us the word of forgiveness. Lord. Come on, say that with me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you
another opportunity. I just want to thank him. Hallelujah. I don't know what tomorrow's going to bring, but tonight I just want to thank him for his loving kindness, for his tender mercies. I bless the name of our God. Come on, let's celebrate God again. Preachers, that did not count toward my eight minutes, so don't start counting. Amen. Bless the name of Jesus. Come on, let's praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We come to bless him tonight. We're so thankful to be in the house. We certainly honor the Lord, first of all. Amen. Come on, we honor the Lord who died. Come on. We celebrate him. Hallelujah. If ain't nobody praising him, each one of us ought to just be opening up our mind. We ought to be a one man choir up in here giving God praise. Hallelujah. Thanking him for his goodness. And we honor our pastor who is not here this evening. We thank God that he arrived safely um, in his place of travel. We pray that God will just bless him in his time of sharing um, where he is this weekend. So we just bless God um, for him um, that again he did arrive safely. So we're thankful tonight. We're blessed tonight to be here on this Good Friday. Amen. I praise God that I know he died for me. Uh, let's turn with me to Luke chapter 23, verse 34. Luke chapter 23, verse 34, as we share in the seven last sayings of Jesus. Somebody ought to be glad about it. Amen. Amen. And we have word number one, saying number one tonight coming from the 23rd chapter of the book of Luke, verse 34. Amen. And the Bible reads, amen. Am I right? Amen. Did I do something wrong at the point? Yeah. Um, praise him. Do I have the wrong chapter? Amen. Oh, 34. Yeah, I'm right. All right. Praise the Lord. I thought I was right. Yeah. Okay. So praise be to God. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Jesus says, Father, forgive them, for they know not, they do not know what they do. Again, God, we bless you for this time, this evening. We honor you, oh God. We praise you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 From that, from that text, from that text, I want to talk just briefly tonight from the thought, same prayer, different crowds. Somebody say, same prayer, different crowd. Same prayer, different crowd. We thank God tonight that Jesus is divine and he's human. Amen. He's fully God and he's fully man. Here in the text, in his divinity, we see Jesus carrying out the purpose for which he came. He's hanging on the cross doing what he was sent by the Father to do. He was sent to die, to die for you, to die for me, to be the ultimate sacrifice, to pay the cost for your sins and for mine. Am I right about it? Are you glad about it tonight? Amen. In his humanity as well, he's hanging on the cross. As he hangs there, he looked down, Elder Keisha, upon a scene that had to cause him great concern. Uh, as he's hanging there, he sees the Roman soldiers who were gambling for his clothing. As he hangs there, he sees the criminals on a cross on both sides of him, and they are reviling him. As he's hanging on that cross, there are religious leaders in the crowd that are mocking him. As he's hanging on that cross, there are those around him that are blaspheming him. I imagine he would probably hear Pastor Mac, the voices from earlier saying, give us Barabbas, uh, crucify him, crucify him. Yeah. Let's place ourselves in the text for a few minutes this afternoon in what had to be a chaotic, in a frenzy, an evil-filled, anti-Christ environment. In the midst of this and the agony, the distress, the physical excruciating pain he was feeling in his body, Jesus prayed. The Bible says he prayed. And listen, not for himself, but he prayed for those that were around him. In what could have been considered his own personal crises, he still offered, he still extended, he still exemplified unparalleled and unfathomable compassion. All right, all right. Out of all he could have said, Jesus, he chose, somebody say he chose. Out of all he could have said, he chose to say, Father, forgive them. Jesus, the persecuted, prayed for the persecutor. Jesus, the Savior, prayed for the sinner. 
Jesus, the righteous, prayed for the unrighteous. Jesus, the innocent, prayed for the ignorant. Even in his agony, Jesus is concerned what was on his heart, what was on his mind, was that was forgiveness of his enemies. Listen, not just people who did not like him, but people, Elder Wright, who wanted to see him dead and gone. Jesus wants to remind us on this Good Friday evening that forgiveness is a choice. Talk to me, somebody. Tell your neighbor, forgiveness is a choice. It has nothing to do with the perpetrator. It has nothing to do with or is not based on the extent of the, or the misdeed or the mistreatment. It has nothing to do with the circumstances. Forgiveness is a matter of the heart, an expression of the will, and an act of obedience. Joel, help me, Jesus. So here is Jesus. He prays, Father, in spite of who they are, forgive them. (laughs) Father, in spite of what they're doing to me, forgive them. Father, in spite of how I feel, forgive them. Father, in spite of what the end result will be for me, Lord, help me. Forgive them. Why, 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 Jesus? He says, for they know not what they do. That is, they don't understand who I am. They don't, they, they don't understand how when they fight against me, they're fighting against you. They, they don't understand that I'm on a mission to accomplish the purpose for why you sent me. They don't understand the magnitude of their decisions. At the point, of, I wonder, I wonder what would have happened had Jesus not prayed the prayer. Had Jesus not intervened, Pastor Mac, I wonder would God have unleashed his wrath? I wonder what would have happened if Jesus had not intervened with his prayer. Jesus' prayer is one of unfathomable, unmatched mercy and agape love. This is the example, I only have a few more minutes. This is the example for us that even in the midst of crises in our lives, we must follow Jesus' example. I hear him in the Sermon on the Mount. He said, love your enemies. Didn't he say it? Come on, growth group, and pray for those who persecute you. Listen, what he preached on the Mount, he practiced on Calvary. And as saints of God, what we hear in the word, we need to practice in everyday life. Why forgive them? Because they don't know what they're doing. Don't fight them. Don't curse them out. Don't shun them. My brothers and my sisters, pray for them. Because as with Jesus, they don't understand who you are. And they don't understand who you belong to. There is power in forgiveness. There is peace in forgiveness. And there is a promise in forgiveness. And as I take my seat in these last 60 seconds that I have, we are still living under the grace of Jesus' prayer on that cross. Over 2,000 years ago today, hallelujah, he's still saying, Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. What you talking about, Pointer? When they fall short, when I fall short, Jesus still praying, Father, forgive her, for she know not what she does. Somebody say same prayer. A different crowd. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. When we fall short, Jesus says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. When we disobey God's word, he's saying, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. When we sin against God, Jesus is saying, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. In the name of Jesus, we're still, and we hear it every day. Maybe not, may not be over, but people still saying, I don't need you oh bless the name of Jesus who do you think you 
are in the name of Jesus. You ain't never done nothing for me in the name of Jesus. Same prayer, a different crowd. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Somebody help me bless the name of Jesus. Amen. Somebody say same prayer, different crowd. Amen. Give God some praise for our co-pastor. Amen. Now, now listen, Greater Fellowship. We had we had an issue coming in the seven last word series. Uh, we had seven words and six preachers. So we had to call in some backup. Had to, but she's not really backup because she's home for real, for real. Amen. Can you help me welcome back to Greater Fellowship one of our own a daughter of this ministry, uh, now at the New Direction Church in Clinton, Maryland. Give God some praise for Elder Keisha Spate. Amen, family. I'm happy to be home. God is good. Amen. 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 You may be seated. We give God praise on this Good Friday. Amen. 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 Give an honor to Pastor Pointer in his absence, my spiritual father and my spiritual mom, co-pastor, um, and all my co-laborers in the word. I am so happy to be here. We're glad to have Amen. you. Amen. Because I can think of some places where we could be. Amen. But I'm yes. happy to On be in the hand. house. That's right. That's right. Lifting up my hand. Yes. Yes. Amen. God is good, isn't he? Yes, he is. All the time. Yes. And all the time, he's all what? All good. He, all yes. the time, he's good. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. I'm not going to be before you long. I do praise God for the opportunity to preach. Amen. Just want to say a quick prayer. God, I thank you, God, for allowing me the opportunity to be here. God, if you don't show up, I can't preach. Yes. God, I need your energy, your strength, God. I pray, God, that your people will hear and be receptive, God, and hear your word, God. I thank you, God, for this time. Thank you for this season, God. Thank you, God, that we're able to be here alive. Yeah. Oh, God, we thank you for another day yes, sir. to get it right. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Lord, if there's someone here today that does not know you as Savior, God, it is my prayer that after the words have been preached, they'll come running saying, what must I do mm. to be saved? To be In saved. Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. My amen. God, my God. If you need a subject or a title, I'll title this, uh, Secure Your Salvation, Lessons from the Thief. All right, all right, all right. Secure, secure Your Salvation. Lessons. Lessons from the Thief. Talk about it. Amen. I'll be reading with uh, Luke, starting at chapter 23. Amen. Wanted to start at verse 39. In Luke chapter 23, at verse 39, we are first introduced to, do, to these two thieves that are hanging on the cross. Mm -hmm. Jesus is in the center. There's a thief on the right. And then there's a thief on the left. And one of those thieves, thieves yells out to Jesus, if thou be the Christ, why don't you save yourself and us? But the other thief rebuked him and said, don't you fear God? He said, since you are under the same sentence, we are punished justly for what we have done. And we deserve this crucifixion. But this man has done nothing wrong. Jesus was suffering in a way that we can't begin to grasp or understand the totality of that experience. But the compassionate thief, right? The pertinent thief, the one who felt moved by Christ in such a way that this whole experience became his road to salvation. And he looks over to Jesus and he says to him, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. 
Amen. These are the lessons that we can learn from the thief. Lesson number one, he acknowledged the existence of God. And I don't know about you, but I want you to understand that there is a God. I know the world doesn't act like that God is real. You know, we live in a society where people want to do what they want to do. They want to go where they want to go. But I want us to always live with the fact that God is real. He's real. He's real. He's real. The Bible says that the heavens declare the works of the Lord. So the thief acknowledged the existence of God. Number two, he believed in a standard of right and wrong. Romans 5 and 12 says, Wherefore, therefore, as one man has sinned, right? And, 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 and it says, sin entered into the world and death by sin. And so death passed to all men, for all of us have sinned. All of us have sinned. And there is a standard of right and wrong. The third thing that the thief realized is that he confessed that he and his companion had, trans, had, had, had trans, transgressed the divine law. They realized that they had made a mistake, or rather he realized that he had made a mistake. Romans 3 and 23 says, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. The fourth thing that he realized is that he was being justly punished for what he was getting ready to endure. The final thing that the thief realized was that he was going to die. And what Jesus did next is a wonderful example of his compassion his understanding, his love, his acceptance, all wrapped in one. And without hesitation, Jesus responded to his plea, and he said to him, I tell you the truth, that today you will be with me in paradise. The thief realized that he was going to die. And I don't know about you, I, 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 I know you, you, you got it going on and you know you're popular and your family loves you and, and, and you have a great job and you're doing things for the Lord. But I want you to understand that no matter where you are, no matter what you're doing, no matter how old you are, all of us are going to die. And we need to learn from the thief that I need to make sure that my salvation is secure. I'll share just something real quick. Um, about four years ago, I was struggling, struggling with a sin issue. And I was fasting and praying. And I don't know if you, if you kind of get on that sin cycle sometimes where you're doing things that you shouldn't be doing. And you're like, Lord, forgive me. But you do it again. Lord, forgive me. But you do it again. And you're on the cycle. And I had gotten fed up. And I was praying. And I had just messed up. Just messed up. And for a split second, the Holy Ghost, the, Ho the Holy Spirit opened up my eyes into the spiritual realm. And I literally saw the devil's face. Now you have to understand that Satan has been around for centuries. This was about four years ago. His face was old. It was wrinkled. His eyes were yellow. His pupils were black. I saw the red horns. And for immediately... Just fear just engulfed me. And I was so afraid. And I told the Holy Spirit, I said, Lord, please do not ever let me see his face again. So when I tell you that sin is real, the devil is real, and there is a place that people are going to go to who are not saved, who are not are living according to the word of God. So I want you to secure your salvation today. I want you like that thief to acknowledge the existence of God. I want you to know that hell is real. I want you to understand that there's a standard between right and wrong. And if we don't get it right on this side, the Bible says that there's too, it's too late. Romans 6 and 23, for the wages, the price of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The gospel message is that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. 
And I don't know about you, but I'm going to make sure that my salvation is secure. So when I get to heaven, I can see Jesus and he can say, I am pleased with you. Amen. Amen. Secure your salvation. Come on and give the Lord praise, everybody. Come on and give him praise. Come on, secure your salvation. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. That was awesome word, acknowledging, hallelujah, the existence of God and believing there's a standard between right and wrong and confessing when we make a mistake. And hallelujah, we praise the Lord, realizing that we're all leaving here one day. Amen. Come on, praise the Lord. Are you glad to be here tonight? Hallelujah. Come on and bless the name of our God. We thank God. We're already on word number three. Hallelujah. I'm just full already. I'm just, I'm just waiting on to be fed more and more at the table tonight. Amen. Elder Betty Baton is coming with word three, the third saying uh, of Jesus from the cross, the word of affection. Somebody say the word of affection. Come on, let's celebrate God for Elder Betty S. Baton. Hallelujah. Let's bless our God. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Before I say anything, I say, nephew, behold your auntie. Amen. amen. Help your auntie amen. in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. God is good, and he's worthy to be praised. It's good to be here tonight on Good Friday. Amen, amen. Amen. Pastor gave us an assignment. He told us how many minutes we have. Amen. Amen. So you all look at me. Elder Point, if I go a little over, just stand up like Pastor would. Amen. 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 Let's pray. Father, in the precious name of Jesus, I need thee. Oh, I need thee. Right now, Lord, I need thee. Oh, bless me now, my Savior. I come to thee. Now let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. For you, O oh Lord, are my strength and my redeemer. Might the people of God say amen and amen. The word of the Lord tonight, amen. John 19. Verses 25 through 27, King James Version. And the Bible declares, When Jesus, therefore, now there stood by the cross of Jesus' his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Cleopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and disciples standing by, whom he loved, he said unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. Yeah. Then he said to the disciple, Behold thy mother. And from that very hour, that disciple took her into his own home. If you need a word tonight, she stood right there. She stood right there. We have already heard from the cross, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. The word of forgiveness for his enemies. We also just heard from the cross, today you will be with me in paradise. The word of salvation for the dying thief. My word tonight from the cross, spoken by Jesus, is behold thy son and behold thy mother. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? The Jews were there to satisfy their craving for Jesus' death. They wanted him dead. He had done no wrong, but they wanted him dead. The Roman soldiers were there, employed, who, when they had crucified Jesus, 
when they had nailed him to the cross, lifted it up and him upon it, and with nothing more to do but wait until he expired and died, yet, even why Christ was in his dying agony, they were merrily, happily dividing his clothes. My God, my God, how heartless and how uncaring they were. But standing there at the cross was Jesus' mother. Amen. I call Jesus' mother and the other three, I call them the mighty four women. These women loved him. They were drawn to the scene by their affection of Jesus. They were drawn to the scene by their love and for their devotion to the Savior. The Bible says, Mary, mother of Jesus, was there with her sister beside her. At the cross, Mary was reminded that it was spoken that a sword shall pierce thine own soul. My God, and it was so. There with Mary, mother of Jesus, was Mary, wife of Cleophas, and Mary Magdalene, out of whom Jesus had cast out devils. She was happy to be there. I called these women the mighty four because they stood at the cross of Jesus. These women stood strong, one another, supporting one another, supporting Jesus' mother. Their presence was due to the fact that perfect love cast out fear. My God, my God. Whether Mary was in danger or not did not deter her from being there. The taunts and jeers from the crowd, the shame and nakedness, the pain, the agony, the stress, the suffering of the Savior did not stop her from being there. Hallelujah. Her firstborn son was being crucified. She is baffled. She could not understand all that was going on for her son. Went about doing good, healing the sick, bringing the dead to life, turning water into wine. My God, my God, he did so much for so many. My God, Mary, Jesus, mother of the cross, is suffering but bound by his love. His disciples, except for John, have abandoned him. His friends may have forsaken him. His nation may have despised him. But his mother, I said his mother, stood right there for all the world to see. Amen. Let me ask you a question. Who among us can appreciate a mother's love? Who among us can appreciate? A mother's love. Amen. My mom has been dead for 34 years. But I appreciate the love that my mother gave me. Mary was not hysterical as some might be. There was no outcry as even I might be. I don't see in scripture where tears fell from her eyes. No word came from her lip. They just may have. But my brothers and my sisters... Mary, I said Mary, mother of Jesus, she stood right there. Amen. She did not run away. She stood right there. The crowds are marking, crucify him, crucify him. The thieves are taunting, crucify him. The soldiers are occupied by his garments. Even a seamless piece of clothing that his mother made for him as a child. The Savior is bleeding. There the Savior is with a jagged crown of thorns on his head. Nails in his hands. Spikes in his feet. He's being tormented in every way. But Mary, I said, Mary, mother of Jesus, did not flee the scene. Mary, mother of Jesus, did not walk away. Mary, Mother Jesus did not think no smelling salt was given to her. She stood, she stood right there. And she stood and she stood strong with our firstborn son hanging on that old rugged.
agate cross. My God, my God, what tremendous courage she had. What tremendous love she had. What tremendous strength she had. What reverence she had for her son. My God. There had to be a divine power from on high to keep her standing right there. But she stood right there. Jesus prayed for his enemies. He spake words of salvation to the repentant thief. But he could not but think of the days of hell. For he was thinking about his mother. He could not commit her to his brothers. For they did not believe him yet. Oh, my God. He looked to his mother, gained enough strength and said, Woman, here is your son. Note, he said, woman, not mother. To call her mother at this point would have pierced her heart even the more. She was already grieving. She was already in pain. So he said, woman, here is your son. In other words, woman, I am no longer your son. And to the disciple, he said, here is your mother. And from that very hour, that disciple took her home with him. My brothers and sisters, even, my God, on the cross, Jesus was thinking more of the sorrows of others than he has his own. Woman, behold. Thy son, son, behold thy mother. Be not dismayed, whatever be tied, God will take care of you. Beneath his wings of love abide, God will take care of you. He would not come down from the cross just to save himself. He decided to die just to save me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, she stood right there. Are you going to stand right there? Come on, are you going to just stand right there? Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Let's praise God for Elder Betty Baton and that word of affection. She stood right there. Praise be to God. Amen. Come on and give God praise. We're moving right along. We just having some awesome word tonight. El debate. You got something stirred up. He would not come down from the cross. He decided to die just to save me. Praise be to God. Amen. Our fourth word tonight. We're on word number four. Praise be to God. Are you being blessed tonight? Hallelujah. Being mighty, mighty blessed tonight. The fourth word is a word of abandonment and anguish. Amen. And Elder Carrie E. Point to the third is going to come and share with us in that word. Amen. Come on, bless God. Amen. Come on, let's give God some praise. Father, help us tonight. Mm -hmm. yes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Yeah, help us. Help us. Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 27, verse 46. Mm. And about the ninth hour, Lord Jesus. Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, mm -hmm. Eli, Eli, Eli mm -hmm. Lema Sabachthani, mm -hmm. that is, my God, my God, why, why? have you forsaken me? Gonna tag my six stuck stuck in the middle. This is the fourth word out of seven. It's dark outside as it is right now. Imagine that it's the afternoon. You're supposed to hear the birds chirping and the, the the leaves and watching nature do its thing, but yet it's dark. Jesus is on the cross. And in the previous three words, he's taking care of everybody else. His persecutors. Father, forgive them. But we have to remember sometimes that um, we believe in something called the hypostatic union. That is Jesus 
was 100% divine, but he was also 100% man. And while the and at this point, if I can use what Pastor likes to call my Holy Ghost imagination, I see the man and the divine in conflict. The divine has taken care of everybody else. He's healed. He's delivered. He's brought people up. And some of those same people have mocked and called for his crucifixion. He's, he's forgiven the very people who have put the nails in his hands and the nails in his feet. He's taking care of a thief who he had never met before today. And he's made sure his mother and his friend were going to him back and say, hold up. What about us? We, we've taken care of everybody else. Has anybody ever been there in life? You've encouraged everybody throughout the day and cried yourself to sleep at night? Helped somebody else pay a bill and wondered how you're going to get a meal? Have you ever given somebody a ride and wondered how if you had enough gas to get home? Taking care of everybody else and still somehow felt alone. He felt alone. All the friends gone. No one there to help him. The, per the, the persecutors wouldn't help him. The thief couldn't help him. Mother was too emotionally distraught to do anything. All the human friends are away. And that would be okay, Pastor Matt. It'd be okay, Tony. But he also felt abandoned by God. This is the only time in scripture that Jesus refers to him as God. Every other time, my father has many mansions. If you have seen my father, you've seen me. I believe the toll is 165 times he refers to God as father. But here, in the midst of the most pain, he cries out, my God! My God, why? And this just lets me know that even though I can stand strong, even though I've been saved and sanctified, even though I've walked with God and talked with God, it's still okay sometimes to question God. And sometimes we have to remember that God can handle our emotion. God can handle our, our pain. In the middle of the biggest pain I felt in my life, but still knowing God's plan is on the other side, it's okay for me to have questions. It's okay for me to have concerns. Because even though I feel abandoned, I know I'm not abandoned. And that's all I came to say tonight. You may feel like your friends are away. You may feel like God has, been, has abandoned you, but the good news on tonight is that it's still going to be all right. It's still part of the plan. God still has a plan for those who love him. God still can do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can ask or think. God can still do what God does. And it's not my turn to say it, but spoiler alert, it turns out okay after this. Stuck in the middle, I can feel away. I can feel abandoned, but I should know it's going to be all right. God bless you. God keep you. May heaven smile upon you. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody say, stuck in the middle. Stuck in the middle, but it's going to be all right. Come on, it's going to be all right. I've got a feeling everything's going to be all right. Oh, I've got a feeling everything's going to be all right. Oh. Everything's gonna be all right, it's gonna be all right, be all right, be all right.
Let's praise Lord. Amen. 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 Elder Baden. Amen. You owe Elder Pointer. He bought you two minutes. Amen. When you went over, he got you two minutes back. Somebody praise the Lord for auntie and nephew. Amen. He saved his auntie. Come on, praise the Lord. <laughs> we bless the name of our God. Amen. Amen. At this time, we are going to um, grab, get our offering tonight. Have you been blessed? I have been so blessed tonight. Amen. We've heard the word of forgiveness. We've heard the word of salvation. My God, secure your salvation. Lessons from a thief. We've heard, amen, word number three. She stood right there. And then word number four, stuck in the middle. Come on, praise God. We've been blessed tonight and we're so thankful. Listen, those at home, we need you to help participate as well in the offering. You may not be in the sanctuary, amen, but you're watching and you're participating. So we need everybody to help us be a blessing. Uh, what we do on um, tonight is the same as we do New Year's Eve. We bless all of our preachers. Whatever we get, we split it with our preachers. So for that to happen, there are seven. So for that to happen, we need you to be liberal. Amen. Somebody say liberal. Amen. If you have a $20 offering tonight, we'd love for you to get that. You can't do that. We'd love for you to get a $10 offering. We just need you to participate. You can give so many ways, so many ways. There are no excuses. Somebody say that. No excuses. Amen. You can give in so many ways. You can give via PayPal, Cash App, Givelify. Amen. Uh, Apple Pay. Any way you want to do it, you can do it. Amen. And we really need you to participate tonight. You cannot sow seed into this ground, into good ground, and God not honor it. God will multiply it. And I just it just blesses me every time I recall this scripture where he talks about he gives seed to the sower. Then he blesses the seed that he gives you so you'll have more to give. Amen. So as we give to God, he certainly blesses it and he gives it back to us, pressed down, shaken together and running over. We can, we'll never lack. Amen. We can't miss the mark when we give into the kingdom. Amen. So we want you to do that again. Those at home, please, right now, we want you as we prepare to pray, we want you to ponder and we want you to say, I want to give. I also want to seed into the lives of these preachers. And they have preached tonight and we bless the Lord for it. God, we thank you for this time tonight. We honor you. We thank you for this opportunity to give, to seed into the kingdom, to be a blessing to your men and women of God. What a great Friday it is. And we honor you tonight that we're here to celebrate it. Amen. Praise be to God. You can come from where you are. Amen. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise. Every praise to our God. To our God. Oh, every praise. Every praise to our Every word of worship. Worship with one accord. Every praise. Every praise to our God, to our God. Say, God, my Savior, God, my Savior, oh, my healer, God, my healer, oh, my deliverer, God, my deliverer. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. God, my Savior, God, my Savior. Worship with one accord, every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise. It's to our God, it's to our God. Amen. We celebrate the Lord tonight. Just want to thank all of you. Amen. All of you. You can still give if you had, did not have time, had to run, get your phone or whatever you need to do. You can give at any time to be a blessing again to our preachers. Let's praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We have word number five, the word of suffering. Amen. Our preacher for the word of suffering is Elder Tony Williams. Let's celebrate the Lord for Elder Williams. <laughs> Yeah, amen, amen, amen. I know y'all say, why he entering on the other side of the pulpit? 
It was closest to me. Let me set my clock because I cannot tell time. And I did not buy a new watch like Pastor said. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. Now let us turn to the book of uh, John, the 19th chapter, verses 28 through 29. Oh, the book of John, book of John. I'm going to read from the ESV version of the Bible tonight. Chapter 19, verse 28 through 29. And it reads this way. After this, Jesus, knowing that all was now finished, said to fulfill the scripture, I thirst. A jar full of sour wine, I believe King James said vessel of vinegar, uh, stood there. So they put a sponge full of sour wine on a hip suit branch and held it to his mouth. Later in uh, verse 30, we found out that he did receive it. Um, my word for tonight is, are you thirsty? Are you thirsty? After this, Jesus knowing all, knowing all was now finished, said, I thirst. I thirst. The suffering Christ is dying on a cross. He is near the end of his human life. See, he was human and he was God. All at once. But we're going to speak about his human side. He knows it. He senses it. He feels it. Why? Because he was just a man. A weak man. A man no longer have the strength to hold up his body on the cross. Yeah, Prince Pilate said, behold the man. Behold the man. He was a weak man. He was human. He was suffering from the pain that he was feeling. Hanging on the cross, having difficulties breathing. After this, after being beaten all night long, after being nailed to that cross, after giving forgiveness, after uh, uh, giving salvation, as he was there between the two thieves, one dying from sin, the other dying in sin. Amen. And the one dying for sin is our beloved Jesus Christ. He was human at that point, hung there for six hours. Oh, yeah, his arms is aching. Yeah, he's full of pain. And then he thinks about himself. One concern about the one else for the first four words on the cross, but it gets to the point and said, I thirst. Are you thirsty tonight? Yeah, the difficulty is breathing. His shoulder's aching. He's hurting. He's suffering. He's feeling pain. He's feeling sorrow, feeling alone. Why he cried out, my God, my God. He was feeling all by himself hanging there on a cross for you and me. He's parched. He's exhausted. And he says, I thirst. Tony was thirsty. He went and got some water. He said, I thirst. We tired. We go to work. Come home complaining. After working maybe four hours and supposed to did eight. And we got complaint after complaint. We're tired. But Jesus on the cross dying for your sin for six hours. Hanging there. Exhausted. His throat is dry. After this. After the conversation on the cross, the dying Jesus said, I thirst. Showing affection, giving forgiveness, he's thirsty. Why? Because he is human. Feeling the sorrow, feeling the pain, the agony. Been beaten all night long. And he gets to the point where he says, that there's knowing that it's about to be done. I thirst to fulfill the scripture. And maybe he was thirsty because he was getting ready to give that victory cry. And he wanted something to quench the, the, the dryness in his mouth so he can shout out a victory cry. Oh, I thirst. 
reminding us of his humanity. See, being in the beginning of his ministry, we learn that he was hungry when he was on a mountain, showing us that he was human. At the end of his ministry, he found out that he's thirsty, reminding us that he's human. And through everything, all that he's been through, he walked with them, he talked to them, he saved them, he blessed them, but still he was human. Oh, behold a man. Yet he don't want to die without preparing to leave with a shout of victory. I got to get ready to leave you today. But before I go, I believe I want to know, are you thirsty? Is it anyone here that's faced with pain and sorrow and suffering? And you're feeling like all alone. Do you thirst after the Lord Jesus Christ? Are you chasing after him? See, thirsting after the things of the world, you're going to continue to be thirsty. Yes, being thirsty, drinking of the well of money, you're going to still want to drink of money. Drinking of the well of fame, you're going to still want to drink from the well of fame. Drinking from the well of your own selfish ambition, you're going to still need to drink from that well of your own selfish ambition. But I stopped by to tell you tonight, come and drink from a well where the water never runs dry. Are you thirsty tonight? Are you in need of God? Are you looking for a miracle tonight? Well, drink from the well that don't run dry. Are you your body, your body in pain. Drink from the well that won't run dry. Do you need a friend tonight? Drink from the well that won't run dry. Why? Because you may be thirsty tonight and you need Jesus. Oh yeah. Come on and drink from this well. Oh yeah. Leave the well of pressures and power and wealth and materialistic things of the world. Stop drinking from the well of social media. Stop drinking from the well of the I N Instagram, the gram. Stop drinking from the well of Facebook. Come and drink from the well of the word of life named Jesus Christ. I want you to know tonight, are oh, you thirsty? Come and drink. That well that never runs dry. That well that walks with you and talks to you and tell you that you is on. Are you thirsty tonight? If you're thirsty tonight, then drink from the well of the living water of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Are you thirsty tonight? Are you thirsty tonight? What are you thirsty for? Amen. Drink from the well that never runs dry. What he's done for me, what he's done for me, I never shall forget what he's done for me. Listening to the words going forward tonight, what he's done for me. Amen. I know someone in the congregation tonight sitting right here want to share with us what the Lord has done for you. Amen. Come on with your praise support. Amen. Who's going to go first? Hallelujah. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, whoever you are. God has been so good to me. I'll praise him. Amen. Come on, China. Come on, come on, come on. Thank you, thank you. Somebody else, get ready, get ready, get ready. Come on, come on, come on, come on. God has been so good to all of us. Come on, come on, give us your praise report tonight. Come on, I'm looking at you, 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 and you. Amen, I'm waiting for you to come on down. That's the way they say it on the prize. Come on down, come on down, come on down, come on down. I cannot believe somebody. Come on down, Linda, come on down.
One more, one more, one more. If I had a thousand dollars and I say, come on down, you'd be running up here. Amen. Jesus got the, Jesus did it all. Jesus paid it all. That money you got, Jesus paid it all. Somebody else? Come on down, come on, come on. One more, come on, come on. I believe there's one more. Come on, I'm calling names, I'm gonna call a name. Come on, come on down. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I just wanna um, praise God for delivering me from some difficult circumstances and struggles I've been having these weeks. Um, and increasing my faith in him Amen, amen, amen. Amen, amen. No one else, no one else. We are ready for our next preacher, the sixth word. And I'll just say, victory is mine. Victory today is mine. Our sixth word comes from Elder Teresa E. Wright. Amen. Everybody, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Glory to his holy and righteous name. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, let your word be a light unto the path of all who will listen so that they too may obey your word. Let your word be delivered with clarity and purpose. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen, amen, amen. The subject of my sermon is where is the victory? My scripture reference is found in John chapter 19, verse 30. And I will be reading from the New International Version. When he had received the drink, Jesus said, it is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Amen. On a Friday more than 2,000 years ago, Jesus hung on the cross all day, and then he died in payment for our disobedience. He was crucified, and since that day, Christians commemorate his death on the cross, which is known as Good Friday. Some may ask, what is so good about Jesus dying on the cross? But before I answer this question, let us look at the person, the promise, and the preparation. Right. The purpose, the person is Jesus Christ, who was sent by God, our Heavenly Father, to save mankind from their disobedience. Right. Scripture tells us in John chapter 3, verse 16a, that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. The promise in fact is found in verse 16b and it says that whomsoever believeth in him, Jesus should not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. Because of what Jesus did, the promise of everlasting life is now available to all who believe in him. How did God fulfill his promise? Through Jesus Christ. God prepared Jesus and sent him into the world with a plan to save mankind from their disobedience. In order for the promise to be fulfilled, Jesus had to live a perfect life and remain obedient unto God our Heavenly Father. Jesus came as a perfect sacrifice by remaining faithful to the will of God. Through the Old Testament, God sent prophet after prophet to warn his people about the consequence for their disobedience. The consequence of disobedience is spiritual death and permanent separation from him. The people did not listen to the prophets and they continued to live not in accordance with God's commandments. God then sent Jesus, but he did, when he sent Jesus, he didn't send him empty-handed. 
Jesus came with God's plan to prepare the people to receive the gift of salvation, which meant that Jesus had work to do. Scripture tells us in Matthew chapter 20, verse 28 of the New King James Version that just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. How do we know? At the age of 12, Jesus' earthly parents were returning home from Jerusalem from the Jewish holiday discovered that Jesus was not among their relatives. They became worried and returned back to Jerusalem. They found him in the synagogue among the priests. Luke chapter 2 verse 49 of the King James Version says, And he said to them, Why do you seek me? Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? Hallelujah. Bless the name of God. Jesus had work to do for our preparation. He started his earthly ministry at the age of 30. He healed the sick. He stood up for the meek and lowly. He gave hope to the hopeless. He gave a new direction for the ungodly. He worked from sunrise to sunset. He prayed to the Father constantly and continuously. He traveled from town to town with little money or food to eat. He preached from the mountaintops. He taught from the hills and in the valleys. Yes, even on a boat in the river. He performed miracles. He did everything that God told him to do. He remained faithful to him even unto death. He didn't go around selling God's word for $60. Jesus prepared for his death. Jesus had returned to Jerusalem for the celebration of the Passover, a Jewish holiday that he had traveled to Jerusalem many times before. But this time, this particular, particular trip was different. He rode into Jerusalem riding on a donkey, proclaiming his sovereignty. And the people began to believe on him and he, that he was truly the son of God. Once in Jerusalem, he continued his work. But later that week, he was betrayed, arrested, whipped, found guilty on a made up charge and then sentenced to death to die on the cross. Hallelujah, bless the name of our Lord. He was sentenced before the same people who just a couple of days ago had worshiped and praised him. Now they're yelling, crucify, crucify him. Jesus was hung on the cross until he died later that evening. But before he died, he took his last breath and said, it is finished. What did Jesus mean by it is finished? His death on the cross finished up everything he had to do. So where is the victory in the death of Jesus? The victory is found in this finished work. Because of his work, our salvation has been complete and sealed. There's nothing else to be done. Jesus did everything that the Father had assigned him to do. It's a done deal. There's no revisions or changes will be made. The finished work included his death on Calvary. Had Jesus not finished the work, there would be no victory. Had Jesus not finished the work, there would be no salvation and our souls would be lost. Had Jesus not finished the work, the Old Testament prophecy would have not been fulfilled. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 says, For unto us is born a child, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. We will never forget the debt that Jesus paid for us on the cross. We will never forget the work that he finished. His sovereignty 
it lives on. How do we know? Because God raised him from the dead. He now sits on the right hand of our Heavenly Father, interceding on our behalf. How do you know? Because Jesus was laid in the tomb on a Friday night. He stayed there all day Saturday. But early on the third day, Sunday morning, the tomb was found empty. He had got up from the grave with all power in his hand. Power to save, power to raise, bow down hills, power over death. The victory is in the power. Jesus blessed us with his power. Jesus obtained victory over death. His death led to resurrection. That's why Good Friday is good. It declared it's a holy day because Jesus conquered victory over our disobedience. Jesus conquered victory over death. It's good because God raised him from the dead. And now we can celebrate his victory. Without his death, there would be no resurrection Sunday or remission of sins. His blood on Calvary paid the price for us. Now we must remember the person of Jesus Christ, the work that he accomplished for you and for me. Remember the promise of eternal life that God fulfilled through his son, Jesus Christ. And remember the preparation of our salvation. The work is finished, but Jesus lives on. He reigns high on the throne. If you believe that tonight, shout hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless his holy name. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. It is finished. Hallelujah, my salvation is secure because he paid the price for my sin. Thank you, Elder Wright. Thank you, Elder Wright. It is finished. It is finished. One last word, one last word from the sands on the cross. Amen. The word of contentment. Amen. He's got a story to tell, and he's going to tell his story. He's sticking with it. Pastor Arnold McLaurin. Well, nobody yielded their minutes to me. And I don't have a subject, uh, but I'm not going to let these other preachers outdo me. <laughs> so I'm, I, I'm just going to talk about mission accomplished. How's that? <laughs> mission accomplished. Hallelujah. We give God glory today. Uh, I'm going to be uh, sharing with you from Luke uh, chapter 23, verse 44 through 46. Uh, Luke uh, chapter 23, verse 44 through 46. For context and clarity, I'll be reading that from the Message Bible. In the Message Bible, it states, by now it was noon. The whole earth became dark. The darkness lasted for three hours. A total blackout. The temple curtain split right down the middle. Jesus called loudly, Father, I place my life in your hands. And then he breathed his last. When Jesus breathed his last breath, something extremely awesome occurred. Even at noon, some witnessed that it got 
totally dark for hours. And the earth became, began to tremble as it were an uh, earthquake. However, one of the most important effects of his dying was that the curtains in the temple tore all the way down in the middle. The curtain in the temple created a barrier or separation in the temple between God and the holy place. And when that curtain was torn, it represented an old order passing away and a new order in transition. The old order was that everybody didn't have direct access to God. But now everyone could have access to God through accepting Jesus as Lord. The scripture says that what? None cometh unto the Father but by Jesus. But now the walls of separation that happened when man sinned have now been what? Torn down. And whosoever will, let him come. The whole mission of Christ and the cross was to restore us back into oneness with God. To redeem us from the curse. And to reconcile us back in relationship with our creator. And so when Jesus gave up the ghost, when he commended his spirit and took his last breath, it marked the successful completion of this entire process. And it was such a powerful moment that it immediately caused the darkness to cover the earth and caused the earth to tremble in response. Can you imagine that kind of power? When he died, he stopped the sun from shining. When he died, he reversed the curse. When he died, he tore down strongholds. When he died, he freed us from the bondage of sin. When he died, he caused us to sing, he delivers. Praise the Lord. I was bound by the powers of the devil, but he delivers. Praise the Lord. When he took his last breath, he was saying, Father, I did it. I accomplished all that you assigned me to do. Right. I have revolutionized the universe. I have made a way for them where there was no way. Right. I have transformed their dark yesterdays right. into bright tomorrows. Yes, I have become their rock uh -huh. uh, in a weary land. Yes, now, what can wash away their sins? Nothing. Nothing. But the blood of Jesus. What can make them whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is that flow that makes me white as snow. No other fountain I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. So let us do a Hebrews 12 and 2 and fix our eyes on Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. Right. Jesus, who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, yeah. despising the shame, right. and is right now right. sitting down at the right hand of the Father, yeah. interceding on your behalf and mine. Yeah. When he took his last breath, yeah. he was declaring like Paul yeah. that I have fought a good fight. Yeah. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith, and henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness that Jesus will give me on that day, and not to me only, but unto also them that love his appearing. And nothing, now nothing, shall ever separate me from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. No, no, no. Nothing good, nothing bad, nothing high, nothing low, no principalities, no powers, no death, no life, because I am more than a conqueror through him that first loved me. When he took his last breath, 
He was reiterating what he said in John 17. Yeah. For now I am no more in the world. But these, say that's me, they are in the world. I'm coming to you, God. Holy Father, keep all of those whom you have given me, that they may be one, even as we are one. For I have given them the words which you gave me, and they have received them, and they know for surety that I came from you and that you sent me. Father, I commend my spirit unto you. I know that I am your son, and I know that you are well pleased with my work on earth. So I now place my life in your hands. I am ready to come back home. I have learned painfully when peace like a river attendeth my way. When sorrows like sea billows roll, yes. whatever my lot, yes. thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well, it is well with my, my brothers and sisters because of the finished work of Christ. The walls that separated us from the love of God, they have been torn down. All that is required of us now is that you get up every day and work as hard as you can love as deeply as you can live as godly as you can give as much as you can pray as consistently as you can forgive as often as you can try as hard as you can be as kind as you can no matter what do all that you do to the glory of God and when you have finished your last breath no matter what the outcome of your life is no matter what each day brought no matter what how things worked out for you and no matter how you were treated on your journey through Christ Jesus our Lord you can also proclaim and be assured that down at the cross where my Savior died down where for cleansing from sin I cried. There to my heart was the blood of pride. Glory to his name. When you have breathed your last breath, just like Jesus did, you too can sing in the words of the old African-American heritage Bible, hymn number 604. There's a bright crown waiting for me in the new Jerusalem. That Jerusalem where the wicked will cease from troubling and the weary will be at rest. All of the saints of the ages will sit at his feet and be blessed. And just like God said about his son, his son will also say about you, job well done. My good and faithful servant, welcome home. It, it is clear at, at that moment when he breathed his last breath that Jesus was content. He was satisfied. He had proudly, confidently, and courageously, painfully decreed to his father before he took his last breath. If I can paraphrase it in these two words. Dad, mission accomplished. To God be the glory. God wants, Jesus wants to continue to please his daddy. And every time one of you acknowledge who he is and what 
he has done for you. It brings glory to his name. And so there may be one who has yet to make that decision. Look, you heard seven of the most powerful words ever spoken in the universe. And if that wasn't enough to change you, if that wasn't enough to redirect your life, if that wasn't enough to tear down all the strongholds that have possessed you, I don't know what it is. But now, he is providing us all an opportunity because in Christ, it is never too late. It is never too late. You can bring glory to the kingdom of heaven today if you give your life to Christ. We don't preach in vain. We don't preach for no, great gain, no glory and no gain. We preach because we are ambassadors and we were told, go ye therefore and teach all nations. If there's one online or if there's one here today that after hearing all that you have heard can confidently and securely make a choice, a judgment and a decision about your life. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart, that God raised them from the dead. You too can be saved. Is there one? If you're online and that is your desire, just type it in the chat. Leave us your name or your number. And we are doing diligence to reach out to you to help you in this life-changing process to turn your life around. Accepting Christ as Lord and Savior. Open the flood. Or if you desire to be a member of Greater Fellowship, Full Gospel Baptist Church, we invite you to come. Say that again, say open. If you are at peace with your relationship, if you are content now to dwell and all is well in your life, why don't you give God some glory right now? Open the floodgates of hell. Whoa, let it rain, let it rain, let it rain, let it rain. Say it's raining, it's raining. Say it's raining, it's raining, it's raining. Lift up your hands and say that tonight. Say, open the floodgates. Open the floodgates. Rain on me. Let it rain. Whoa, let it. Come on, tell the Lord. Let open the floodgates. Open the floodgates of heaven. Let it rain. Let it rain. Whoa, I need you, Jesus. Somebody say, thank you, God. Open the flood. Oh, let it rain. Let it rain. Listen, as, as we continue to play that softly, if you've been blessed by the word tonight and you didn't get a chance to give earlier, amen, we want you to do that now. Our giving avenues are still open. Who was blessed by the word? Amen. If you're in the virtual space, let me get a hand clap emoji or a hand praise emoji. Maybe you joined us late, you missed the giving part, or you left and came back. Amen. We just wanted to make sure you have an opportunity. You can give through our app, GFF GBC app, Greater Fellowship on Apple, uh, on Google. Uh, you can just search for Greater Fellowship or GFF GBC. Uh, eventually you'll see the purple circle with the purple cross in the middle that'll be us you can go ahead and download that it also enables you to give through apple pay and or google pay amen uh, you can also give through our other giving methods give the five cash app paypal uh, our cash app is cash tag gffgbc paypal is gffgbc at aol.com and give the five greater fellowship full gospel baptist church you can just search for that name 
our pastor and co-pastors. Our pastor and co-pastors picture will come up uh, and you will be, know you have the right church. Amen. Uh, please, as co-pastor asked earlier, if you can give 20, uh, we would love for you to do that. Maybe you gave earlier and you feel led to give again because the word got good to you. Uh, we will be uh, more than happy to uh, welcome that as well. We thank you. We God bless you. Our co-pastor is going to come back now and close us out as she sees fit. You've got some praise for her once again. Oh, let comes. it rain. Come on, let it rain. Say open the floodgates. Open the floodgates of heaven. Whoa, let it rain. Let it rain. Whoa, let it rain. Whoa, open. Open the floodgates of heaven. Let it rain. Let it rain. Come on, let's give God praise. Can we give the Lord praise tonight? Come on, keep playing that for us. Can we give the Lord praise tonight? It doesn't take God long to do nothing, does it? Amen. Come on, we've been blessed by the word tonight, and we haven't even been here two hours. We just praise the Lord. The word has been rich tonight. The word has been powerful tonight. Amen. And it's our prayer, whether you're here in the sanctuary or you're watching online, that the word that was deposited in our lives, that we'll leave refreshed tonight, that we'll leave encouraged tonight. I was encouraged tonight by the word of God. I thank God for our preachers who prepared themselves to deposit a word tonight. Amen. Amen. And if you're here, it's because God wanted you here that you might receive what he had to say. Amen. And we just bless the name of God. We want to give opportunity tonight just for a few minutes of prayer. Let's praise God for our guest, Elder Spate. We want to thank God for her willingly accepting. Amen. Make sure your salvation is secure. Amen. Please go back and listen. It's almost like a good movie. You know how you have to go back? and watch it again so that you can get everything that you needed to get out of. Go back. The word was so rich tonight. And I believe God is pleased that we're here to receive it. Don't sleep on it. Don't take it lightly. Don't take it casually. Don't even feel it was just something to do. The Bible says our steps are ordered by the Lord. And if he orders our steps, he's ordering them with purpose. Amen. And there's something in your life, in my life, that God wants to do. And it's through his word that he does it. So we want you to just stand from where you are. Where you are. If you'd like to come up, you can do that. But if you don't, you can stay where you are. We're just going to lift up a prayer tonight. Hallelujah. Come on and bless the name of our God. If you'd like to come for prayer, our elders, our preachers, they're going to come and pray with you. If you want them to pray with you, lay hands on you, just touch and agree with you, just come tonight. God, we're so blessed tonight. Yeah, yes, we are, God. Oh, bless your name. Hallelujah. We don't take lightly what you've done tonight. We know that you are in our midst. We heard tonight you have power to do anything, everything. Your dying on the cross was purposed that we might have life. Oh, bless the name of God. We're not powerless. We thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit. As Jesus says, I'm going away and I'm going to send a comforter to be with you, to live in you. Mm, come on, pray with me tonight. Open up your mouth and bless him. Thank him for your being here tonight. Thank him for your being here tonight. Thank him that things are as well as they are. It could have been the other way, but God saw fit that we're here tonight. Oh, bless him, bless him, bless him. Come on, if you like prayer tonight, you can come. Or again, you can stay where you are. God, we bless you. Hallelujah. God, we thank you. Come on, lift up those hands. Are you thirsty? Do you, do you want them? How, how bad do you want it? Tell them, I need you, oh God. 
I need you. Every step of the way, I need you, oh God. Operating in my life, speaking into my heart, guiding my footsteps, protecting me as I go to and fro. I recognize who you are. Thank you for dying on Calvary's cross. And as we heard tonight, you stayed right there until the mission was accomplished. You stayed right there because you came with purpose. And God, we thank you tonight. Our hearts are open. Mm. A fresh anointing tonight. Fall on us. God, we want to feel your presence like we've never felt you before. Feel the void that's in our life, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Allow us, oh God, to open up our mouths and bless the name of our God. Hallelujah. Stir up in us, oh God, in the name of Jesus, a desire to praise you, a desire to bless you, oh God, a desire to honor your name. Stir up in us, oh God. Passion for you like you had passion for us. Commitment for you like you had commitment to us, oh God. Stir up in us, oh God, a praise God, a victory cry, God. In the name of Jesus. 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 Let us acknowledge your Lordship, God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, yeah, this was repeated tonight, and we know without the shedding of blood, there could be no remission of sin. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. If nobody says thank you, God, I say thank you, Jesus. Thank you for where you brought us from. Thank you for what you snatched us out of. Thank you for what you kept us from. Thank you for what you protected us from, oh God. Thank you, God. We know that all of our help comes from the Lord. Ah, if it wasn't for you, we don't know where we would be. Oh God, we open up our mouths tonight to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you, God. We couldn't save ourselves. We couldn't keep ourselves. If we had to do it, we'd make the wrong choice. We do the wrong thing. We go the wrong way. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for that hedge of protection that's around us. Thank you. My, 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 my. Thank you. Uh, he can't, it, 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 it. Thank you. We bless you. Thank you for this time, oh God. Uh, this intimate time of fellowship with you. We thank you for those that are watching. We thank you for those that are here. Ah, he get it, 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 mama. Holy Spirit, hallelujah. Holy Spirit, have your way, God, in the name of Jesus. It, 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 my God. Ah, let us see you in a way we've never seen you before. Ah, he it, 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 my. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Uh, fill our mouths, oh God. Fill our hearts, oh God. In the name of Jesus. God, we thank you for the victory belongs to you. God, even now, there are some of us, we're praying for something. We need something. Uh, I hear you, God. Mm. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And God, I know you're going to do it. Ah, uh, he kid it. God sees that situation. He sees that problem. Ah, uh, my, 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 my. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Come on, won't you thank him for it? You know who you are. Won't you thank him for it? Don't wait till the victory. Don't wait till the battle is over. Won't you go ahead and thank him for it? Come on and claim it right now in the name of Jesus. Come on right now and claim it in the name of Jesus. Come on and claim it right now in the name of Jesus. Come on and thank him for it in the name of Jesus. Somebody need to clap and thank him for it. God says, I'm doing it right now. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that we can trust you, God, that whatever it is, it is all well. It's all well. So, Father, we thank you for tonight. And again, we thank you for the word. Seal it in our hearts. Bring it back to our remembrance. We're going to leave here stronger and wiser, yeah. <laughs> better. Yeah. Woo, thank you, God. 
It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Come on, somebody thank him. I need to hear a victory cry. 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 Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We got bless God for you. Have a wonderful, wonderful rest of the evening. God bless you. Thank you for joining us tonight. We certainly look forward to hearing your voice at 6 o'clock in the morning for our 6 o'clock a.m. prayer tomorrow. And certainly we want to see you in the house, in the house on Sunday for Resurrection Sunday. God bless you.